Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, increase in us the gift of faith, hope, and love that we may obtain what you promise. Make us love what you command through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning. Good morning. Our first reading is from Jeremiah, chapter 1, verses 4 through 10. God calls Jeremiah to be a prophet and consecrates him in the womb. Jeremiah's task is to preach God's word amid the difficult political realities of his time before the Babylon exile. He is to make God known not only to Judah, but also to all nations. A reading from Jeremiah. Now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, and before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, Ah, Lord, truly I do not know how to speak, for I am only a boy. But the Lord said to me, Do not say I am only a boy, for you shall go to all to whom I send you, and you shall speak whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Now I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I appointed you over nations and over kingdoms to pluck up and to pull down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 1 through 13. Christians in Corinth prided themselves on their spiritual gifts. Paul reminds them that God gives us many gifts through the Holy Spirit, but the purpose behind all of them is love, the kind of love that God showed us in Jesus Christ. A reading from 1 Corinthians. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist in its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we see face to face. Now I know only in part. Then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now, faith, hope, and love abide. These three, and the greatest of these, is love. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the fourth chapter. Glory Glory to to you, O Lord. Lord. Then Jesus began to say to all in the synagogue in Nazareth, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They said, Is not this Joseph's son? He said to them, Doubtless you will quote to me this proverb, Doctor, cure yourself. And you will say, Do hear also in your hometown the things we have heard you did at Capernaum. And he said, truly I tell you, no prophet is accepted 
in the prophet's hometown. But the truth is there were many widows in Israel at the time of Elijah when the heaven was shut up three years and six months and there was a severe famine over all the land, yet Elijah was sent to none of them except to a widow at Zarephath in Sidon. There were also many lepers in Israel at the time of the prophet Elisha, and none of them was cleansed except Naaman, the Syrian. When they heard this, all in the synagogue were filled with rage. They got up, drove him out of town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town was built, so that they might hurl him off the cliff. But he passed through the midst of them and went on his way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you. you, O Christ. You may be seated. Sometimes a town can get a label through no fault of their own. I'd read a, a quote years ago, W.C. Fields wanted on his tombstone, I'd rather be in Philadelphia. <laughs> Maybe you remember the old, old Tonight Show when Johnny Carson was host and how often he would joke about beautiful downtown Burbank. And then there are some names that become infamous for other reasons. We, uh, we remember maybe the Waco and the Branch Davidians. Again, no fault of the, the people in Waco. Or Cheno Chernobyl and the reactor melt, melt down there forever. Ch Chernobyl will be a name that equates to meltdown. People in places are stuck struggling for their image, their identity. And I believe that Jesus' hometown of Nazareth also struggled with an image problem. After all, in the Gospel of John, we have Nathaniel pipe up saying, can anything good come from Nazareth? The people of Nazareth could have been a bit sensitive about their reputation. And so, when Jesus shows up in the synagogue and, and reads from the scroll of Isaiah, they're saying, yes, he's one of ours. This man is out there and making a reputation for himself, and all that we hear about him so far has been nothing but good. And, uh, and so, he is claimed. He's ours. He's Joseph's son. But how easily it is to go from he's ours to he's ours alone. Ours exclusively. Now, this morning's gospel picks up where last week's gospel ended, where Jesus was again in the synagogue in Nazareth and reading from Isaiah. And, uh, and today we pick up at the point where Jesus has handed the scroll back to the attendant and he has taken his seat, and then he announces to everyone, today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. And those words inspired many compliments among the people gathered there. Yes, this is one of ours. He is here to announce all that is good, to tell us the goodness of God breaking through in among us. Yes, we're so glad he's here. And, uh, and then, of course, they, you know what? You were doing some things we'd heard in Capernaum. Boy, couldn't you do some of that for us? And uh, now, sometimes I wonder, maybe Jesus could have just let that lay there, you know? I, I don't think he needed to touch that. He could have let it go and said, yeah, okay, you know, uh, you've heard good things about me, and, uh, and leave it there. But no, he had to say, well, doubtless you're going to quote to me, Doctor, heal yourself, which sounds a little odd, but you can think of that as, uh, as another way of saying uh, the, the, the popular saying, charity begins at home. Or remember in your, in the, uh, when you're getting the, the pre-flight instructions from the flight attendant, they always say, take care of your own mask before you try to help the person sitting next to you, right? So, you know, take care of yourself first. 
then worry about others. And, uh, and so Jesus is saying, yeah, doubtless, that's, that's what you're thinking right now. We're going to take care of our own first. But remember, think back to Scripture. Remember that three-year drought in Israel. And I'll bet you there were lots of widows in Israel during that three-year drought. But what did Elijah do? He went to the widow in Sarephath in Sidon. He left and helped elsewhere. Or how about in the times of the prophet Elisha? Remember how in his time there were probably lepers in all towns all around throughout Israel and yet the one report we have of Elisha curing anyone of leprosy is when the general from Syria came down, Naaman, an enemy of the people, he got cured. Now, Jesus knew that it was time, that this was time for a hard word for the people. And, uh, and so he needed to let people know that God's word is not confined or reserved to just one small corner of the, the world. God's word is not for just a few. God's word is for all of the lost, all of the poor, the foreigners and the outcasts. In other words, God's kingdom is here, but not here exclusively. And to the people of Nazareth, that was startling news. After all, he was in their pulpit. He should be speaking to them. And he's talking about others. You know, we can fall into that snare of inclus or exclusivity very easily as well. You know, one of, uh, one of the songs that I hear people say all the time, oh, that's one of my favorites, that's one of my favorites. Goes, uh, the, the refrain goes something like this. And he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own. Okay so far, right? But then it continues. And the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. That's a pretty bold statement for someone to claim that no one else has had such a relationship with God except me and me alone. Pretty self-centered there. In order to demonstrate the love of the church, God is working wonders outside of the church. You know what? God is working wonders outside of Christianity. That's a hard word to hear. But think about it. God's Holy Spirit precedes us out into the world. If God's Holy Spirit was not already out there, where would our mission field be? God is working outside of every single Nazareth that we can imagine. He's already out there. The Holy Spirit is already at work in people's hearts, and we are called to be helpers, not simply recipients, not to simply sit back and let all God's goodness pour down upon us. But as the church, as the body of Christ, we're called to be out there helping in the work. Now, the people of Nazareth were outraged by this. After all, remember, they had that reputation. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? And in fact, someone good was driven out of Nazareth. Their exclusivity led to them even ex excluding the one who was good. We could see this also as a foreshadowing of the cross of Jesus Christ. It is in our desire to be exclusive, to be self-centered, that we end up sending our Christ to the cross, 
to die for us. It's not God's harshness or aloofness that angers people. I think some people actually expect and hope that God will be harsh, harsh toward others, or aloof, <coughs> ignoring those who ignore God. But it's not that what angers us. It's God's mercy that angers us. God's way of acting in the world is healing, to offer good news to the poor, to welcome the alien. And we as the church are called to follow that path, to follow where God's Holy Spirit is leading the way outside the church, outside of our inner circles, to others. But remember, we are all recipients of God's generosity, kindness, and mercy. The call is to share. Amen. I invite you to stand and join together with me, confessing our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance, so we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. Guide your church in the way of faith, hope, and love. Cultivate ministries and communities of compassion that bear witness to your enduring presence among us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Teach us to live in humility on earth. Curb arrogance that leads to destruction of natural resources and disregard for future generations. Inspire the work of scientists who urge us to live in harmony with your creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You are the refuge of all who seek hope and freedom. Accompany immigrants, refugees, and asylum seekers who cross borders to find safety and opportunity. Embolden leaders to draft compassionate policies on behalf of migrants and those who assist them. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Love bears, believes, hopes, and endures all things. Comfort with your love all who are lonely, fearful, or heartbroken. Sustain the hope of all those who suffer in body or spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Your grace falls upon young and old alike. Bless the gifts of children in this congregation and in this community. Give us humble hearts to follow their leadership. Inspire us with their laughter, their insight, and their curiosity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We praise you for those who have gone before us and now see you face to face. Abide with us in this mortal life until we rest in the arms of your never-failing love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O God, we lift these and all our prayers to you in confidence and faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.